lot of uh, medical discussions, but uh, one group that, uh, uh, various groups, of course, are affected by the various activities concerning COVID-19 and the efforts to contain it. And one of such uh, groups is the Restaurants and Foods Services Association of Nigeria. Uh, with a wide membership, I'm being joined by its uh, national president, Mrs. Kendi Kamsin. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, in what ways uh, have your members been affected by COVID-19? Well, <laughs> that's I mean, as uh, groups, as a group, Oh, yes, actually. oh, yes. That has been phenomenal. That's been very devastating, not just to our sector, but everywhere. I mean, the whole thing is catastrophic. But um, you do know that for the food industry, people would always say the people eat. That's what people say. They say the food business is good, people eat. Indeed. But there are underlying factors, like when you present in corporate style right. to your customers, and um, it, it's not particularly very nice right now. And even before now, it has been strained. So it definitely has affected us. Um, the immediate effect was the total free fall of, cost of the customer base. People who don't feel safe to be out there interacting. Uh, you can't socially distance and be interactive with your friendly food provider. Indeed. So that has its impact. And of course, there are so many problems associated with the lockdown. Um, to start with, there's restrictions for people to move. So how do they get to you? And how do your workers get to the workplace without further exposing themselves? So there are lots. Then there's supply chain issues. Actually, that was what I was going to ask. Yeah, there are serious supply chain issues. Um, you remember the president, Mohamedou Buhari's broadcast on, I think it was on the 29th, the Sunday, Sunday. Yes. which exempted um, the food um, services and food sector from all the interferences across borders and even within the restrictions. But the truth is that that's not how our experience is playing out. The experience of members, particularly those that operate outside Lagos and who have depended over the years on a lot of raw materials coming from Lagos. So that has been really a very down low for them. And as it What has were, been the specific problem? Is it that they're not being allowed to move there is, anymore? There, 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 is, there is problems that emanate from, um, um, from different states being ruled by different directives. Okay. For example, Lagos State permits our sector to operate, but right. under certain circumstances, you shouldn't have more than 20. It should be mostly take away, take away. apply all the you know um, restrictions and all that. But take a place like, say, Port Harcourt. You can move into or move out of Port Harcourt. So we do have members that move raw materials across the state border lines. Uh, the firm, and they can't move. There's always delays. There's always sometimes overzealousness on the part of the law enforcement. Sometimes they are just not allowed to move. Sometimes the delays result in damages, spoilages, and outright, you know, stoppages along the way. So within a short time, some operators will not be able to Continue, uh, operating. continue operating where they have depended on some seasonal, some convenient raw materials from Lagos. And remember that Lagos has a very active port, and so a lot of imported items that we use for garnishing are there. Some items are just particularly cheaper from this side, um, like our packaging. It can cost point times two if they are sourced up north. Okay. So, so those are some of the challenges they're having. And of course, the challenges cut across the entire economy. It's not peculiar to us, but for us, some These things are, the... are grounding us right now. Now, what, 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 what would you want uh, to be done? What can be done? What would you advise to be done to make this situation a bit easier on your members? Okay, you know, at times like this crisis period, um, sometimes the the 
um, regulators and the government functionaries are not quick to respond. For instance, it's very simple. Let's have a tracking document for every logistic vehicle or truck or whatever that's moving across uh, state boundaries. Let's have it properly documented. Let the law enforcement recognize that this is an association and its members are conveying nothing illegal but what Pres Mr. President himself has endorsed. And let it, that once we're able to show something, then they should allow us easy passage. And of course, there are so many ways that um, we, government can also assist because we, we can assist government. We would like to assist government as well in many ways. But you know, there are still so many financial controls that the government that are not necessarily linked with COVID-19 right now, but that the government can do to alleviate the problems of uh, businesses generally. I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask you to expatiate on that. Uh, Definitely. Bit, but that, <laughs> we, we, we've got to take a break now. Yeah. Uh, when we come back from the break, I'll ask you to expand Good. on that. So please stay with us. Thanks for staying tuned. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we're still with the National President of the Restaurants and Food Services Association of Nigeria, Mrs. Thank you for coming through. Uh, before, we, before the break, uh, and to wrap up the discussion now, uh, you were about to talk about what are the things that you know, need to get done. Yes. And I said, okay, I would want you to expand on that. And also use the opportunity to now talk about some of the things that you have or would like to do for, oh for the government at this time. Straight off, what we would like the government to do for us is to um, immediately attack that problem with logistics and supply chain disruptment. disruptment. Mm -hmm. Reason, this has been even before COVID-19. Okay. And whatever is done now will actually extend beyond, beyond this period. So it will help us that government actually um, comes to our aid in that respect. And we have gone ahead to provide a tracking document that we just want government to endorse and recognize so that all the law enforcement along the way know that, oh, this, this is, is RevSpan. And RevSpan is big. RevSpan has all the big industry movers in our sector. So, I mean, the big players are with us. All the likes of Chicken Republic, uh, tasty, sweet sensation, tantalizers, all of them are with us, and some fine dining restaurants. And as a matter of, of fact, other food-related businesses, like um, those who make equipment, manufacture equipment, and so on and so forth, and food suppliers, supply chain um, people. So we, it's about time that government gave us that air. And, of course, I don't want to sound like I'm asking too much because everybody is entitled to be treated nicely after and during this period. But government is going to have to look at certain things because these are really terrible times. And we don't even know what's coming next because we haven't seen Nigeria respond to this pandemic. We are still at the very initial uh, stages. And I really pray that we get over that and we're able to track it in its boards. But my concern is that we can see very little ahead. We don't know what's going to play out. And government can actually do some tax reliefs, even if it's for two or three months, to get over the um, effects of this pandemic. It, may become necessary and judging by whatever happens later government may be some may may see it compulsory to do that because this has really brought the whole economy to a halt and has affected um, employers of labor now we are talking as business people how about our employees these are people who woke up and within the space of a week the jobs are gone the truth is that nobody can send workers home for a month and without any business be able to pay them. So except for maybe some reserves that may be or some, some kind of insurance, 
our workers are expecting nothing. And that is a blow to them. So there must be, I know that the Lagos State packages and the federal packages will come a long way to alleviate, but there's nothing like losing a job for whatever time frame. And it is obvious that after this pandemic, things will never be the same. I don't see this landscape remaining, remaining the way it was before COVID-19. I am certain about that. We all pray for a better tomorrow, but we need to be realistic about changes that, about different types of changes that our consumers are going to exhibit. People must eat. Yes, everybody says that. But there are all sorts of cheap options. And so all practitioners are going to have to look inward, re-strategize, look at a lot of things, change the way they do things, change the way we buy, change the way we sell, change the way we communicate with customers, change the way our processes, right. change all that we do to, um, to mitigate the outcomes that, God forbid, are worse than what we have today. Now, uh, in our last minute, uh, I'd like you to use that to talk about those things that you said you, you in turn, yes, would be angry to do for, for, for the government. Yes, yeah, say not what you want the government to do for you, say what you can do for the government. It's a vice versa thing. That is how civilized societies are run. And we think that we can lend a voice to the government in communicating um, about uh, um, coronavirus, COVID-19 to, uh, to people in general, um, even beyond our customers, we can lend the government our voice. We can use our facilities to serve the government. What am I saying? I mean, we're hearing of relief packages that um, many of the state governments are deploying Indeed. to ease the period for uh, the populace. Um, we hear that some, I mean, the, the citizens do, do not f re they not fully appreciate these packages because maybe there has been interruptions in reaching them. But we can lend the government our facilities. They can be vehicles. They can be, you know, channels by which government can reach the people, number one. We can use our facilities to help cook for government without any expectation of any unusual reward. You know, once our costs are covered, then, um, I mean in terms of actual costs, costs then the we, costs can help, we can together. help government cook, we can help them take to designated um, stations for distribution, mm -hmm. we can help them do all sorts of things because the members of the association are respectable brands of credibility. And that, that is the only thing we can do right now. And of course, you know that um, one or two, several members have started, you know, giving back. Exactly. You know, I can tell you straight off that at least about five members of the association have been giving meals to the isolation centers, to the caregivers, to all the logistics people, to the research stations. It happens daily. We move food back and forth on a daily agreement. Some have donated 2,000 meals. Some have donated 1,000 meals, and they are dispensing it by the day according to the requirements of the um, the benefit of the health authorities. And, you know, there's so much that we can do for the government right now. Thank you very, very, very much. I've been uh, speaking with uh, Mrs. Kende Kamsen, who is the national president of the Restaurants and Food Services Association of Nigeria. It's been our pleasure. Thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming in.